Welcome back to lecture one, part four, pain throughout the organ systems in uh, pathophysiology. I keep saying lecture one, but it's actually week two. Anyway, so what are the signs and symptoms of an MI? Dipsnea, or shortness of breath. That makes sense, right? Kind of hard to exchange oxygen if your heart isn't pumping correctly. Uh, sudden severe chest pain with radiation. Of course, we all know it radiates usually down the left arm, correct? Just take a second and look at the rest of the signs and symptoms. Then click on the link and watch the video here. It's not what you were expecting, I'm sure. Okay, if we catch it quickly enough, an angioplasty might be a great option. We'll also want to use the thrombolytics if it's within three hours of the MI. So we can dissolve the clot and probably save some tissue. After it's all over and the patient is, quote, safe, then we'll probably want to keep them on some typical meds like beta blockers, which will keep the heart, um, it, it'll keep the heart pumping less hard and keep the speed under control, so less fast, less hard, um, and ACE inhibitors are also going to do that. Do you remember them, ACE inhibitors from anatomy and physiology? Do you remember this drawing? Um, I don't see the need to read this to you other than to take a few minutes and look it over. Start with a kidney on the left side of the diagram and move up following the arrows. This diagram, remember, shows how to raise blood pressure. But our objective in a patient with an MI is to lower blood pressure, isn't it? So how do ACE inhibitors help here? This is the kind of question that I love to give on test. You have a case study that makes it clear that the patient had a heart attack and was prescribed an ACE inhibitor. Then the question is something like, what is the correct mechanism that made the ACE inhibitor work to prevent further attacks? This is another drawing about ACE inhibitors and how they work and how to remember them, their names. Uh, you won't be responsible for remembering their names in this class, but I promise you that you will be in your professional medical programs. Do me a favor and look at this slide for a few seconds, then think about what, mo what notes you might take on it. Was your instinct to list the three types of antihypertensive drugs and examples of brand names under it? That's nice if it was, but it won't get you too far in this pathophysiology class if that's what you did. I already said that I wasn't going to ask you to memorize the names of drugs in this class. What I do want you to know, however, is the physiology behind the drugs. For example, a patient had a heart attack and was prescribed um, cardizem a calcium antagonist as part of his future prevention plan. Why would cardizem have a positive effect on the patient's health? A. It lowers blood pressure due to decreasing aldosterone in the bloodstream. B. It decreases the inotropic effect on the myocardial tissue. And C. It causes increased chronotrophy in the heart. In this case, the answer is B. It decreases the inotrophic effect on the myocardial tissue. If you didn't get that, then it's because you were caught completely off guard, and I'll tell you why. Quite simply, it's because you're not used to studying at this level yet. Not test taking, studying. First, if you were lost on the vocabulary, then it's because you didn't remember the terms from previous anatomy and physiology classes. Unfortunately, I have to assume that everyone remembers at least terminology from the prerequisite courses, or we'd never get to new information and skills on this course. Aldosterone, antagonist, inotrophy, and chronotrophy are terms that should have been covered, but even if they were not, studying for this class the way I want you would have caught this anyway. Um, here, th here's how this should have gone down. One, you look at the slide and write down three types of antihypertensive drugs. Two, remember that I said you don't have to remember drug names in this class. Three, you question why I put this on the PowerPoint if you don't have to know it. Four, 
you realize that I spent some time explaining the mechanism of action of ACE inhibitors but didn't say anything about beta blockers or calcium antagonists so you think to yourself I must have to know how they work since it's on the slide 5. You google quote mechanism of action of beta blockers and calcium antagonists for heart attacks 6. You come up with something like like this link and it's in the transcript not here but from the uh, NCIB, uh, NIH, National Institutes of Health. Look at it in the transcript. At this link, you can't understand what the heck decreased inotrophy means. So you look it up and remember that it's just less stress on the muscle. Step seven, you ask yourself, does that make sense? Will decreasing stress on the heart muscle that just had a heart attack help it? And of course the answer is, is yes. And then you're about where I want you to be. But now you're saying, are you kidding me? How was I supposed to know all of that already? This is day one of the second week. To that I say, yeah, that would be nuts asking that of you without guiding you through the process first. That's what we're doing right now, by the way. The alternate method if you have any doubt of the level of studying that I expect in this class is to do this sequence. One, you look at the slide and write down the three types of antihypertensive drugs. Two, you remember that I said you don't have to remember drug names in this class. There are a few exceptions for this rule by the way, but I'll make it very clear when we come up to those. Three, you question why I put this on the PowerPoint if you don't have to know it. That's about all the same, right, as the other option. And four, you make a note to ask about it in class the next day. Uh, when you ask about it in class, I get a big smile because I know you read ahead and watched the videos. That means to me that you're ready to go on to the next step and learn deeper. That means that I don't have to waste my time reading slides to you during class time. Now you're my favorite student and I go on to break it all up into little groups and learn about the mechanisms of action of beta blockers and calcium antagonists during class time. Everybody learns much deeper that would have been normally possible if you didn't study ahead and ask deeper questions. Yay! I'll know you'll remember when it's time for you to ask for a recommendation for graduate school and I'll say your name here is an exceptional student that comes prepared to class and will do great in your blank school. I highly recommend your name here. See how that works? And let's stop right there.